1971, I was in a car accident, a car wreck that resulted in the amputation. When Bob Radosi first looked for a prosthetic arm in the 1970s, he couldn't find one he was happy with, so he designed his own. Eventually, that idea morphed into a world-leading company. There's just not many things that we can't do anymore with a, with a prosthesis. We have devices ranging in everything from archery all the way through swimming. One challenge that remains is the complex problem of a device for golfers who have an arm amputated above the elbow. I've always felt that we could do better, and that was the challenge to the students at the University of New Brunswick. On the backswing. That challenge is now in its fifth year at UNB. We really want to first change the geometry to something that Bob was looking for, uh, more slender, and second, uh, improve the, the manufacturing process. Students Trevor Scott and Lucas Pupek feel they've made big progress this year. Thanks to this 3D printer, they can now make moulds in a fraction of the time that it used to take. With this, uh, it took 34 hours to print. That sounds like a long time, but in the engineering world, uh, you put it in today and you know come back the next couple days it's done we've done yeah. you know <laughs> seven or eight different iterations we presented those uh, probably every two weeks next week they hope to carry out motion capture tests with a local amputee bob radosi will get to see the device in person in may and decide if it's ready for tee off to think that you know maybe i'm helping someone regain their ability to play golf or even play golf for the first time is really exciting redmond shannon cbc news fredericton